Okay, so we're going to share some more, uh, this isn't really a research video, but it's how to come across some of the things you'll need for your model railroad. Uh, you know, I like coming up with as much stuff as I can for free or low cost or no cost free, right? Um, but uh, anyway, you know, something that reminds me of an old sign, sign, signs, everywhere the signs, you know. And uh, there, there's all kinds of signs and things to use around a model railroad to make it more lifelike. So I'm going to show you how to get some of that, so stay tuned. Okay, so we are playing with signs on our model railroad. There's a lot of sources for signs out there, and there's a lot of free stuff out there. You know, over the year, I've collected signs out of Model Railroad magazines, uh, Model Railroad Craftsman, a lot of those. You know, from time to time, they'll have a page in there where they're building a building, and the signs uh, that were on those structures or whatever will actually be printed in the article that you can cut out and use on your Model Railroad. Uh, a lot of paper uh, labels on real goods you buy in life will have logos and things like that that you can cut out and use for your Model Railroad. Uh, but online is a great source. Just uh, do Google searches for various things. Uh, Google searches for, you know, I, since I model old, I do antique billboard sign search or antique liquor sign search or antique food sign search or, you know, circus, um, you know, uh, movie posters, just all kinds of things. Back in my days, you know, there would have been posters and billboards on the sides of all kinds of buildings and stuff so you know I can use a lot of this type of stuff in modern times it's more graffiti than billboards and signs uh, but there's road signs there's railroad signs you know just all kinds of signs out there so let's just jump into this and I'll show you some of the things I've came across and talk more about sources as we go through this now, there's several different things I use for signs. Um, here's just a few different shots of a, a bunch of old, old matchbox covers. And you know, these fold out, and in the old days they had a lot of advertising on them. In the newer days they have some, but they're not as colorful, and uh, you don't have as much information on them as they used to in the old days. These antique ones from the time period that I model just have tons of good stuff on them that you can, uh, you know, use for signs. Signs. And basically all I do is put all these in Photoshop and I, you know I'm just going to throw a couple of examples up here but here's one that you know off of it was a foldable but you could you know the seam in the middle doesn't look bad on it you could use this for a billboard as well as a sign if you wanted to and you know you could use this for a square sign but you could also cut out the round golf product and use it in front of a gas station as well if you wanted to and you know it would work just fine you know a motor oil you know there's just all kinds of advertising that you can get from old matchbooks covers and that's just one of the sources that you know i use for things now I do do a lot of searches on the internet too and you know I needed old movie posters so I just did a Google search for antique movie, movies and came up with a couple of different sites and you know there's just all these are from you know a long time ago and a lot of them are from the period that I would model you know they're a nice piece of artwork in themselves and I suppose you could also crop these and use them for photos on a wall somewhere if you needed to or you know blow them up and use them for more some of them are, are usable I guess for billboards but most of them are you know, more usable for uh, posters on the sides of buildings and things back in the time period that I model you know if a new movie was coming to town there might be several buildings around town where these posters would be, be basically glued to the side of the brick of the building to advertise what was coming to town that week to get everybody to come out and uh, go to the movies you know so I just downloaded a whole bunch of these and basically what I do then is I just come through and put them all on uh, one sheet you know which reduces their size really small and I throw a black background on it and uh, just work with them to some degree to make sure you know when you reduce some things they don't look as good as they do in full size and 
you know vice versa it depends on the scans and the photos that you're working from sometimes you can really do work with this stuff really easy and other times if you try to enlarge it or make it real small it just does not work as well but uh, you know here's just a basic sheet with all those posters added to it with a black background and you know I can print these and I can enlarge them make them smaller Another thing I did was I came across a house that had a bunch of old medicine cabinets and stuff still in the kitchen and there was just tons and tons of various containers and you know a lot of these still had really good antique labels on them and I just took uh, photographs of everything with the labels before I got rid of all this stuff and you know once I've got photos to work from they're already aged and look antique just you know so you don't have to do a whole lot of aging to them but you know after I take these pictures I just come back and crop them I mean you can play with the brightness and color and all that kind of stuff on them if you want to I don't necessarily get that involved in them really uh, but they're just really nice examples of old-time advertising and these could be reduced or made larger and put into store windows or you know anything and basically I'm just coming back here and showing a few of those that I just showed you uh, that I've cropped into signs and like I said these can be made smaller to put in store windows or you know anything depending on the product I mean some could go in pharmacies some could go in uh, you know, grocery stores or back in my days there was a lot of general stores that just carried a little bit of everything and you know any kind of sign like this could have been used in any of those stores really because they would have carried a variety of everything from clothing to food to uh, pharmacy products or anything really but you're going through and doing this you know just start uh, thinking about the stores and stuff that you have in the town that you live in Think about the time period that you model because uh, various you know products would have been used at different times this next section here I'm doing is just on a uh, you know I did a food search and there's just all kinds of signs here that came up that were related to uh, anything really in a general store a lot of its food products but some of the other stuff is stuff you might find in a grocery store or a general produce store and some of these signs like this apple sign and several of these could be just be put up as posters on billboards or on sides of buildings and one thing you did see a lot of was different soda signs back in my day you know coke and pepsi still to this day you know you see signs everywhere for them uh, but here's one for jello i mean you know it's a nice old sign and uh, you know just brings back that feeling of that time period milk you don't see a whole lot of advertisements for milk in today's world but uh, you know this is just an old poster that uh, brings back the feeling of that time period brasso I mean this is still available today but this is a nice shot of what it looked like in the advertising from back in the old days you know, and then you know, back in the old days too, you saw a lot more uh, different types of tobacco uh, advertisements out there. And there's just a few examples here of different things from you know 40s and 50s that uh, were you saw advertised back then. And these could have been used in a variety of stores or saloons or uh, taverns or anything from that period of time, or even on general buildings. Uh, you know, cigarettes and uh, cigars were you know very, very advertised back in the day. I mean, here's one for Buster Brown shoes. You know, I mean, these these are just things you saw on sides of buildings or in windows or anything. And here's a large section of uh, soda uh, ads coming up here. I mean, Coca-Cola, you just saw tons of this stuff. And especially if you find them like these that have, you know, five cents written on them. That kind of dates the uh, signs as well. And, you know, when you put them in your uh storefronts in your model in 50s or something like that that would have been the price during that period of time so it really puts a date on what you've got going on in the front of your buildings you know original root beer float i mean this could have used been used in a pharmacy with a soda bar or you know a lot of different places actually pepsi cola five cents I uh, don't drink a whole lot of soda anymore. I wish we could still get soda for five cents. Maybe I would drink a little bit more. 
Uh, it's just become very unhealthy, so don't drink that much. But these ads, you know, that they really do speak of the time that uh, that they were, you know, out in. It just, you know, it really dates. The look of the sign really tells a lot about the area you're modeling if you use the specific signs that were used during that time period. Uh, some of these here, these were nice old, old signs. And you know, you could really crop these and turn these into photographs hanging on the wall if you wanted to and get rid of the as advertisement parts of them and use them in different ways other than just for advertising. Uh, great for interiors. I mean, here's one that could be used as a billboard as well as, you know, a regular sign if you wanted to. Uh, this would blow up to be, you know, pretty decent. You know, another thing that was out back in, a long time ago, and you don't see as much today, but you used to see a lot of liquor advertisements, really, too. Uh, some of them were national brands that you did see everywhere. And... Uh, some, you know, there were a lot of uh, distilleries and things in a lot of local areas that those local areas are the only ones you really saw those particular brands in. So if you're modeling a specific place, look around to see if there were any distilleries in the area where, you know, you're modeling because those, if you could find signs from those, that would really put another fingerprint from the place that you're trying to model in your uh, model railroad. Now I am modeling a circus train, and so you know I just went through and just uh, nabbed a whole bunch of circus signs from various stuff. Uh, I'm not really going to model the Ringling Brothers or any of those. I may just do a fictitious name on my railroad train, but some of these signs could be used in cities or anything to uh, you know for any circus. It wouldn't have to necessarily be the Ringling Brothers or Barnum and Bailey or any of the big circuses and some of these could be used on some of the sideshow trailers as well you know just uh, odd sideshows that went along with the shows at the time and here's one that is strictly ringling brothers and barman and bailey uh, but you could also crop this and do other things with the sign and you know remove that name if you wanted to Another thing advertised, uh, you know, a good bit are different motor vehicles. I mean, there's several here from different types of motorcycles. And, uh, you know, once again, I tried to stay with the time period I model and looked for signs online when I did my research of antique <coughs> signs. And, uh, you know, all this is old motorcycles. Probably some of these are a little earlier than the time period I model. Um, but they'll give you the a hint that they aren't at least modern times and uh, they are older signs and some of them look quite aged uh, so they you know work really well you know in automobiles and trucks uh, whether it was just a a service station or an actual uh, dealership or somewhere that uh, did work on cars like this sign here uh, there was just tons of automotive places and shops and parts dealers and things like that and uh, a lot of these signs are very useful around the model railroad uh, of course then again look for more modern ones from your time period if you're modeling a more modern time period but uh, for what I model a lot of these are just awesome signs to be using for the time period I model <clears throat> And then you come across just, you know, as you're looking through stuff, just signs that could be used anywhere for anything. They're not specifically time specific, although these do look a little older. And sometimes you come across this world map that uh, can be, you know, reduced down in size and used on a wall somewhere. And you know, just would make a nice photograph in a building somewhere. So it would work really well. And once I get you know a whole bunch of those downloaded and cropped and worked on what I do is I start adding those onto pages and you know just the ones I'm currently interested in I just start putting tons and tons of them on pages and uh, creating pages of different ads and stuff that I want to use and the others I keep in a you know digital file sometimes I print them out and keep hard copies of them to use later on uh, but you know once I have a bunch of these uh, pages put together then what I do is I come back and and start adding them onto other pages and put two or three of those pages onto another page and reduce their sizes even more you know sometimes if I want to use them for billboards I'll leave them large but you can see here I'm starting to get more and more on a page some of them I put with black backgrounds some I did not 
some of them I work with a little more because they just don't turn out as good as I want them to when they be when I be begin with them. And then, you know, here's a sheet that has, what, nine different sheets of those uh, posters put on them. And they're, you know, they're duplicated on here, uh, but it gets them down in size to the point where I can start adding them into windows and buildings and uh, storefronts and that type of thing. And it just gives me a lot to work with. And, uh, you know, in HO scale, everything's always small, so I reduce them down to use them for what I need them for. So there you just have a quick uh, you know, video on uh, some of the sources that I use to grab signs from. There is tons of stuff out there. If you own a computer and uh, you can get to a printer somewhere, you can print a lot of this stuff. There's ways to thin papers, you know, different papers you can use. A lot of this you can even buy on eBay or various sources uh, decal uh, paper. And you can print these with a laser printer on decal paper and make decals out of a lot of this stuff to uh, add to your model railroads. Uh, just uh, you be aware that you know white inks are not something that print with normal printers. They are printed on white paper and they use the white paper as a background uh, for the white in any of the photos that you see that are uh, printed. So you know unless you have a special printer and special inks you can't print the white unfortunately. Uh, but that stuff exists out there with a little bit of an investment you can uh, do decals of any kind. Uh, you know, but if you're printing on paper and applying the paper to buildings or signs or anything like that, you have the white in the background, you can print anything you want to. And there's just tons of stuff available out there. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, whether it's, you know, I, I save labels off of cans and boxes and stuff like that. Sometimes I just take pictures of originals and add them in my computer and then print them off to use them. Um, but there's just tons of way to get signs for your model railroad and no matter what era you model you're gonna need signs so you know just jump out there and play with some of this and uh, learn how to do it in Photoshop you can correct a lot of things or resize things or you know do a whole lot of uh, additions and corrections to a lot of what you download to be able to print what you want to print uh, so you know the, 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 the options out there are kind of endless as to what you can do for your model railroad as far as signs go. So thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me. I do appreciate it. Uh, you know, hopefully a lot of this stuff was useful. Pass this on to other people in the hobby and share this on the internet. Uh, like and my videos as well down below. Hit the thumbs up. All that helps my analogs and uh, gets me out there on the internet a little bit better. Um, you know, I'm sitting at less than 500 uh, subscribers right now. I'd like to get that up a little bit more and work on that some. So my, uh, I'm out there. When you do search I don't always show up that much on the on, on YouTube videos, but anyway, uh, it's a small genre. Uh, you know, a lot of people out there don't know this stuff exists, so share this with them in the hobby. Subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell icon down there, so you'll be notified when uh, you know this stuff comes up when I release it each week. And uh, you know, do some model railroading and uh, enjoy the hobby and uh, spend some time scratch building this winter and add some signs to some of what you're doing and happy model railroading.